unit two. So for the unit two, we are doing muscle physiology, neurophysiology, spinal cord, the nerves coming off the spinal cord, spinal reflexes, because it's the nerves testing, then that's going through the spinal cord, and then cranial nerves. This is different in order in the sequence from in your book. So I have all of the physiology bunched together. Muscle physiology of how muscles are gonna contract at the cellular level, and then a nerve has to go to every skeletal muscle. So then we're gonna learn about the nerve, the electricity down that, and then how it then tells the muscle to contract. So for me, the muscle and neurophysiology have to be taught together, but your textbook has them in different places. So we're jumping around and I tend to do that. So just know for people that like to read things in a sequence, this will bother you. So we're definitely jumping around there, but that's because I feel like the muscle and the neurophysiology while we're mentally down at the cellular level, we might as well just get it all out there. And then that way we don't have to jump back and forth because this is often a bit of a different study pattern than you might employ in other areas. Because instead of just pointing to something or even the tissues, here's a hyaline cartilage, where is it? What's it do? We're gonna be in the cell, things that you can't really see, touch, visual, you have to really visualize it. And then you have to be able to then understand all these little processes that's going on. And so it's, it adds a layer of complexity because you really have to get your imagination working well. So it's, I just wanted to point that out to just know that you may want to um, alter your normal study technique or just know that it just straight up flashcards sometimes aren't enough. Um, you might want to map something out and kind of brainstorm and kind of things, things like that. Just just to give you a heads up on these two. And then we get into more standard anatomy, like name this nerve, here's a part of spinal cord, and we kind of do that. So again, it's sort of, we have to go through some mental study gymnastics sometimes based on the topic that we're covering. The muscle and neurophysiology, for the reasons I just stated, is like thinking down the cellular level, you have to imagine all these little ions moving in, and we're really down, you know, at the, the at, you know, the molecular level is, probably the most difficult part of this chapter, of this unit. So again, just to kind of point that out to let you know there's some complexity there, it's the physiology. And then the other part when we get to the nerves, um, as well as the cranial nerves, there's just kind of a lot of them. Here's the name of a nerve and this is what it does. It's not complex, it just is a lot. So it's just a list, but it's not trying to figure anything out, it's just name this nerve and this is the area that it's going to innervate. So again, it's gonna be a completely different study technique, but just it's a little more voluminous if you wanna think of it that way. So I just wanted to set that up as far as what to expect for this chapter. And come see me when we're done with each sort of area, you know, when you go to write your summary guides or summary study guides or anything like that, that you wanna go over anything or show me your notes or show me your flashcards, then we can go over any of those things and kind of tell you where maybe you don't need to study so much in this particular area, but maybe more flashcards in this other area or something I can be happy to help refine that for you if you want me to. Okay, so as far as muscle physiology goes, these are the parts. We're first gonna do just muscle structure. What's the muscle made of? What are the terms? You know, what are the layers around the muscle? And then we finally get down to a single muscle cell, how the excitation, that's the nerve impulse, really the electrical impulse gets to a muscle, what's going on inside to then get to the point that that muscle is gonna contract. That's the excitation contraction coupling and then that's pretty much the hardest part. Then we go into muscle metabolism of just what's, you know, where, how do we get glycolysis and ATP and what are we doing as far as energy for muscles? And then we'll just recap quite easily what we did in tissues and just, again, with cardiac versus smooth muscle and just a couple little differences of how they contract. And that's about it. So the hardest part is gonna be really part two on this one that we're gonna go through. And so. We're gonna power through that today. Okay, so here's our study guide list that we're gonna go through and we'll recap this once we've gone through this part of the lecture. This is before we even talk about the muscle tissue itself that's doing the contracting. This is actually connective tissue that goes around the muscle. And the most effective way is if I like to imagine saran wrap. So you wanna think of saran wrap and Tootsie Rolls. That's what we wanna think of. So imagine we have this epimysium, 
paramysium and endomysium. They are coverings. Mysium, the M-Y, refers to muscle. So it's a muscle covering. Epi means around the whole entire muscle. Peri means around some bundles. So you have muscle cells that are bundled. And endo means around a single muscle cell. So if we think of these markers as being muscle cells, we remember they're like logs in the log truck. So imagine I have some saran wrap and I were to wrap one muscle cell in saran wrap. And then it's got some extra hanging on the end like a Tootsie Roll wrapper. That's one. That would be endomysium. And say I do that to a whole bunch of them. And they all have their own endomysium. And say I have 20 of these with their own endomysium, individual wrapping around a single muscle cell. But say in a group of 20, I take three or four and I wrap them with a bundle. And I have another group of three or four. That's perimysium. It's just bundles of some individual muscle cells, a bundle of them. And then the epimysium is all of the bundles, so it's all 20 cells together wrapped up that makes the whole muscle. That would then be epimysium around the whole darn thing. But each layer that we're wrapping around, starting from the endomysium around the single muscle cell, to the groups of them with their own extra wrapping, paramysium, to finally the groups being bundled together, and then the epimysium being wrapped up. They all have this sort of hanging off end like a Tootsie Roll wrapper. That is the tendon. So each of these super thin layers of saran wrap that I indicated are dense, really thin, dense, regular connective tissue sheets but they go all across the entire muscle cell and then the hanging end part where the muscle cell ends and then later the bundles and the whole bundles and you have like the Tootsie Roll ends as far as the wrapper being, that is no long, it's now free of the muscle but still connected to the muscle altogether. That end is what's gonna go and connect with the periosteum of bone and connect with bone. So a tendon really isn't like you have a muscle and then now you have a tendon attached to the end of it. That would be a weak point. So the fact that we have it going all through the muscle from the origin through the muscle to the insertion, almost like continuous bands, but just lots of layers, that's what makes tendons so strong. That's connecting muscle to bone. So the endomysium, so specifically for your test, you will likely see a diagram or a description where it's like a picture of what's wrapping around a single muscle cell, endomysium. What's wrapping around a group of muscle cells, paramysium. What's a wrapping around the whole entire muscle, epimysium. So it's either gonna be written in a descriptive way like that or you'll see it on a picture. So that's really what you have to know. I then want you to translate all of those ends as being what the tendon is. And that's where you can understand how strong they are. Yeah. So we have the muscle attachment to bone, that's a tendon. So a tendon's gonna take your muscle, attach it into bone. It is the ends of the endomysium, paramysium, and epimysium that's gonna come together. And that's what's gonna attach then to the periosteum of the bone. Remember that's that outer membrane or outer skin of the bone. So epimysium, so I have this picture of chicken, like you would just get at the butcher, you know, in the dissection. Have you noticed when you, if you're out, you got chicken breasts and say you take the skin off, so these are skinless chicken breasts, notice how it's got like a sheen on the top. And if you cut into it, notice the actual meat is more of a dull matte color versus the top, so it's a little shinier. Well, that's because the dense regular connective tissue with the regular alignment of collagen, so we saw it on the histology, actually reflects light. So the point, the whole reason why I even put this here is not that I care about chicken, but I want you to appreciate the thin layer of the epimysium that is the dense regular connective tissue. It's just not as thick as it is in the actual tendon itself, but we actually see it over. So this is actually, did I say, no, this is actually epimysium because it's one whole muscle. It's a breast muscle from the pectoralis major from the chicken. And it's gonna separate one muscle from its neighboring muscles. Then, if we open up, we get a single whole muscle, then we're going to do something here, okay? Paramysium is going to then be 
a group, a bunch of them. So if there's lots of individual tiny muscles, this is like a bundle or a bunch of them. And so notice a whole muscle will have several bundles, bunches inside. So the perineceum is going to be going around that. Um, so it's, the key here is it's a group of muscle cells. And this is a zoomed in view, so you can actually see individual muscle cells all within here or within each one of those circles. So this one's got, you know, like 20 of them in there. And then the paramyceum is going to go around that. The endomyceum is going to then be going around a single muscle cell from within there. So then that one is going to be, so the muscle coverings are going to be epimyceum on the outside, paramyceum around bundles, and endomyceum is going to be around just a single one. And together, they form the tendon that's going to attach to the bone. Okay. Now, let's look at a single muscle fiber. It's the same thing as a muscle cell, but because they're long like a log, we call them fibers. Here's a muscle fiber coming from a bundle. We take this muscle fiber, we're going to expand it. Here we go. This is what it kind of looks like. So I'm sort of copy, cut and paste all these cartoons. So from a single muscle fiber, remember these are the striations, it's dark and light bands. We have multi, remember it's multinucleotic, so we're dealing with skeletal muscle here. So if we expand this section, we can still see there's little bundles of stuff within. We're going to get to that. But we also have this blue thing, we're going to name that, and we have these yellow things. The yellow parts in this case is actually electrically active um, components in the cell to help activate the cell when we get to that part. So remember I told you part two, the excitation, contraction, coupling. These parts are really important for that. But right now we're just gonna name everything. So we just have terminology under a belt and we just kinda know what we're talking about. So this is a single muscle fiber. Inside a single muscle fiber are these little things called myofibrils. So it's, if you want to think of like a muscle cell or a muscle fiber, like a mechanical pencil. And so in a mechanical pencil, you're going to have the lead. It's long little cylindrical fibers, like as long as the pencil, but it's not, it's different than the cell, which is the pencil, right? So it's got inner workings that are also cylindrical. That's the myofibrils. So we have these myofibrils. They're actually going to be the part that's doing the contracting. So the yellow part is going to conduct electricity down in the cell. The, the blue part is going to release calcium, which is going to be the inside trigger. And then the myofibrils are going to be doing the contracting. So, and we'll, we'll get to this as we go along, but I'm sort of like to give you a heads up so you can kind of see where they're going as we go through the material. So here's the muscle cell components. The outside cell membrane of a muscle cell, also known as a muscle fiber, the outside cell membrane is known as a sarcolemma. Anything that has sarco or myo just means muscle. I may ask a test question that says the cell membrane of a muscle is called what? You know, a sarcolemma. Or I have a picture just like this that will have you identify these parts. So it's just, this is kind of a naming part. The sarcoplasm is the same as cytoplasm. Remember, cytoplasm is just the fluid inside the cell, but because it has the prefix sarco, it just is specific to muscle. So it's cytoplasm, but for muscle. So it's called sarcoplasm. And then we go into T-tubules, finally the yellow things. The T-tubules, these guys are the electrical conduction system, like the interior wiring of the cell. That way, if a nerve is to stimulate a cell, it doesn't just do it to the outside, all the way deep in, all the parts are gonna contract together. So it's really important to get that stimulus to go through the entire muscle. So the T-tubules, the yellow things, that's what they're called. So they're conducting the signal to get going inside. Then the blue thing is known as the sarcoplasmic reticulum they contain in the muscle specifically is a lot of calcium. And we're not talking about calcium that makes our bones strong, it's the same stuff, but we don't deal with it. Calcium is really going to be our main trigger that tells when our muscles to go. Like basically, just to give you, like I'm giving you the punchline before I even tell you the joke. So the whole thing about excitation, contraction, coupling is really, when do we let calcium out? 
Let's let calcium out so the muscle contracts. And when we make a muscle relax, we just suck calcium back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So really, letting calcium out or bringing it back in determines whether the muscle is contracting or relaxing. So these are all the parts, you know, like whether we, where we keep the calcium when we want it relaxed. The myofibril is just the parts that's actually going to be doing the contracting. We're later going to learn about the actin and the myosin that are contained within these myofibrils that's actually doing the pulling that brings the muscle together towards the midline. That's sort of like an accordion, but not really like an accordion, but it sort of scrunches it up and that's caused muscle shortening and causes your joint to move. On this muscle cell, we can see the outer. What's the outer layer, the cell membrane called? Sarcolemma. Sarcolemma. And then it's all within the fluid. What's the fluid of the cell called? Sarcoplasma. Plasm. Sarcoplasma is the, the cytosol. So what is the yellow part that's going to bring the electricity into the cell again? T-tubules. T-tubules. What's the blue part that's hanging onto the calcium? Sarcoplasm reticulum, and what are these guys going to be doing the contracting? Myofibrils. There you go. Okay, you got first part of your practical exam all set done. Okay, now we're down to the myofibrils. Now we're going to get into the contracting parts. So we're going to get, so again, we're just naming all the parts. In the next step, when we do part two, we're going to go back up and then talk about the calcium and put it all together again. But right now we're still digging down the basic anatomy of this muscle cell. So the myofibril, I kind of like this picture because it shows you some sarcolemma peeled back. So you can kind of tell that's the membrane. We're looking in there. We have a black nucleus here. We can see, you know, it's like, again, to me, it's like a mechanical pencil. Here's the pencil, but the myofibrils are like stacked with all the lead inside of it. It's still long like the cell, but it's different. It's not a whole cell into itself. So here's the myofibril pulled out. So now we see it. And so as a whole, here on the muscle, can you see through the sarcolemma, we see these dark and light bands. Those are the microscopic striations. So if we pull out a single myofibril, we can see dark and light bands. They actually have more stuff going on. And we're going to be going into detail on this too. So it just gets better and better. Um, but we have dark, light, dark, light. And that collectively gives you the appearance of, on the histology of a muscle cell. So we're going to go into it. And notice this thing repeats all across the muscle. So we're going to look at a section that notice this zigzag line, it's really light purple, right in the middle of what would be a light band and another one. And it actually repeats over and over. So one section to one section, we're just gonna call that a sarcomere. And we're gonna learn what's happening inside a single sarcomere and know that's being repeated thousands and thousands of times over across the whole distance of the muscles. Just to recap kind of this to kind of get us all through it, and then we'll still be going through here. So in a single muscle cell, it's loaded with tons of these little myofibril sticks. And a myofibril stick, think of it, I'm going to put these, getting a lot of muscle use out of these. Well, so say here's our muscle, like a long muscle, and this is a myofibril. And then we have like, you know, another set. So this is a myofibril, but they repeat. So where there's like a connection and a connection like this. So one section is going to be like one section. It's from here to here is called a sarcomere. So we go sarcomere to sarcomere to smart sarcomere. And later, when the, yes. It's, yeah, starting from one blue line, which we're going to learn is a Z line, because yeah. it's zigzag, to the next Z line. And then it just goes to the next Z line and to the next. So one section, Z line to Z line, is a sarcomere. And later, as we're going to learn, when the muscle contracts, it's actually the sarcomeres, each one scrunching together. So if we have this sarcomere scrunching, this one scrunching, then you can see collectively from either end, the whole muscle is coming together. So that's our kind of where we're going with this. And so now the interior structure, that's the myofibril. Okay, I'm just whipping this thing around, okay. Um, that's the myofibril, thank you. And then we wanna break the myofibril down into visual sections. So we end up with, say, the label on this marker is the dark band. And then we have the light where the connection is. 
So that's where we're going to go here. Okay, so we're all feeling more comfortable in the perspective. Again, we're like diving down, diving down. And this is the confusing part. So we're going to learn all this stuff, but you want to really have, be comfortable with the original perspective. Then things make a lot more sense. Myofibrils are made up bundles of these proteins. So again, the dark and light. There's going to be two things that make up the dark and light. And they are going to be the thick and thin filament. The thick filament is myosin. And that's going to be the dark red part. The thin filament is going to be actin. And in this picture, it happens to be where the zigzag lines are, the Z lines, the blue. So you can see how this, even in this picture, they just threw a thicker red line here. That's what this one sort of expanded to look. And then we have these really thin, lighter lines. That's the Z lines. This is the thin filament that's actin. But notice it's got little arms going up. So there's going to be overlap also. Okay. So we'll recap the cell. Here we are. Sarcolemma outside cell membrane. And it's got, you know, mitochondria, nucleus, and stuff like a normal cell does. And then we have T tubules, sarcoplasmic reticulum, and then we have these myofibrils. Sarcoplasmic reticulum is actually wrapped around them. We break the myofibrils up to a single sarcomere. So we have the dark, which is myosin in the middle, and we have the lighter, thinner filaments on the outside, which is the actin. And ultimately, it's the actin that's coming in together to contract. But again, we'll see that as we go along. We have the red is myosin. That gives it the darkest kind of line if we're looking at the striations. And then we have actin being the blue, the lighter color. And that's why it's the thin film. And this thinner, it's more like a rope. Later, when we learn about the muscle contracting, the myosin are these strong arms pulling, and the actin is the rope that it's pulling on. Here's a single muscle cell, and then popped out is the myofibril, um, and then we can see how it's in this section. So now we're bringing this over here. Here's still part of the myofibril, and we can now see individual myofilaments. Okay, and so who remembers what the darker one? Again, now they change colors on us, but the darker, thicker one is myosin, and the thinner one with the zigzag lines is the actin. So just to kind of get ahead of us, we have this actin, and see how it goes into, so there's sections where they overlap. Eventually, this myosin, they literally, on this side, are going to be pulling on the actin to pull it, like this way. And these myosins are going to pull this side. So eventually, how a muscle contracts is these Z lines are coming together. So we're going to get into how that happens. But we're down at the teeny, tiny part of a muscle cell, like all right, so we're going Z-line. So here we go. Z-line to Z-line. What do I have next? And C. Okay, so I shrunk it down. Okay, here we go. So here's a sarcomere. A sarcomere is Z-line to Z-line. So here it shrunk down. And then here we go. Whole myofibril is just always at end to end, like a train, like this. Are we good? Sort of. We're still in the sort of land. Okay. Yes. Like a train. Yes. So think of a. So if you want to think of a long train, a single train car would be a circle mirror. And the connection from one circle mirror to the next one, where it's connecting, is the Z line. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm just sort of processing. Just gonna let it sit. Sorry, I asked a question and then I completely forgot. The whole thing is a myofibril. The whole thing is a myofibril. So if we're if the train analogy people, the whole long train is a single myofibril. And each then individual each individual car is a sarcomere. So the way I did this was on the top, I'm showing you a single enlarged sarcomere, and then I shrunk it, and then I went to say, oh, there's the same thing repeated over and over again. So we're going to come back to focus on the one, but again, I'm giving you a perspective on the whole thing as like, it's still going to happen like hundreds of thousands of times over because they're all going to be butted up against each other. 
Yes. Okay. Question. It's just to the next. Yeah. Okay. Ready to move on. It's going to be how it contracts. So here we go. All of a sudden, we contract. Did you see that? <laughs> okay, go back. So here it is in this mode. It's like relaxed. Yeah, this is relaxed, just normal muscle. And when a muscle contracts, we're going to actually see the, well, this one is just shrink, so it's really not as great. But what happens is these dark bands, the myosin stays the same. If you think of the dark bands, each side is pulling on the actin, little arms, and it's pulling it together. But it's happening all the sections at once. So in the end, collectively, it's the two ends where the tendons are that's coming in. So now these are then pulling on the tendon, and this would attach to bone, and that would after through the muscle. So lines and zones. This is extra nitpicky, and I often skip it outside of the Z lines. However, I have heard from many of your areas, whether it's in your nursing or some of the pre entrance exams, some of the terms here are on it. So I don't want to shortchange you, shall we say. So I'm going to give you some more detail here. I bands are just the light areas. Z lines are in the middle of the I bands. I personally only care about the Z lines. But I want you to know though, because the muscles are well known for being dark and light bands. So the I bands is the light bands. Then we have the A band, which is the dark. And the M line is the stripe in the middle of the dark. We are back to a single sarcomere, so we're going back to one more tr one train car again. So remember, the myosin in this particular picture happens to be the purple or the darker purple, where the actins more the thinner red lines. So again, don't get hung up on the colors because whatever book you look at is going to have a different version. You want to think of thick is myosin, thin is actin. Now it's going to get fuzzy because we're going even further to the molecule level. So notice I just overlaid it here. Okay, the blue is what? Myosin. And then we have this kind of orangey color, twisty things. They're going to be your actin. Okay, so I had to change the pictures because now we're down at a tighter, but I'm trying to overlay it so you can still see. We're still talking about Z lines, the zigzag, attaching to our actin that goes in here. We still have our myosin, but now look, it looks furry. Doesn't it? I have a little projection sticking off of it. These are going to be those arms that are doing the pulling. So earlier, it just showed us line. But now you're going to see how it works. So here it is, zoomed out, kind of expanded. We have our Z lines at the side. That's actin. It's kind of the reddish color going into the orange. Um, actin, and it's actually made of beads, these little beads. Actin is actually like if you took these two like pearl necklaces or bead necklaces and twisted them. That really is the actin strand. That's how they are looking like molecularly. So that's why they're drawn as these sort of orangish, yellowish beads. That's actin. They're connected to the Z line, which is the actin backbone. And they are going to be on either side and around the myosin, which has these little heads sticking up from that's the little furry part of the purple guys, the myosin. Okay, eventually it's those little furry purple guys that's going to be doing the grappling onto the actin to pull it in. So that's what's going to be happening. So this is it coming in. It's coming in, coming in. That's how muscle contracts. Okay, going back out. It's a relaxed muscle. Now it's not showing you the grappling because I have an animation coming up at a single one, but just know these guys are doing the grabbing and pulling. These guys are doing the grabbing. They're pulling from opposite sides, the myosin is. So here we go, contract, oops, a little bit in, a little bit in, a little bit in. That's the muscle shortening. So notice the myosin stays the same. The actin actually stays the same. It's just being pulled together. 
So this is known as the sliding filament theory because these are the filaments, the actin and myosin. You don't have to know, I won't have you know that term, but I'm just, you'll see it if you're looking up in the book. This is a section on the sliding filament theory. That's just telling you of the actin and myosin coming together. So we get really, you know, down to the nitty gritty here. And you don't think we can get down any further, more nitty gritty than we already are, but we are, so you're in luck. So now we're gonna talk about myosin. So here's the myosin, right? We're gonna look at one beam of myosin. So what myosin is, a big thick filament is bundled together of a single cross bridge. So you've got like a one long arm and then the little part that's winged up. So we're seeing the winged up as the hairy parts and the long parts are what's all bundled together. So we're gonna pull one of them out. So it ends up having two pivot points, this hockey stick or golf club thing. The whole myosin is just bunches of them bundled together. So this is one of them, our hockey stick or golf club. They're going in opposite directions on either side of a single myosin molecule. Because remember, we saw the Z lines coming in. So one side's pulling from this side, the other's pulling from this side. Hockey stick golf club actually hinges at one part and then that hinges at another part. And then we have binding sites. So here's a hinge. Here it comes lifting up. So it's going to lift up and pivot. This is how it's actually lifting toward the actin that's going to be next to it, but we'll see it all together. But we know that a single myosin cross bridge, which is what this little guy is, is going to lift up. That's its first hinge point, the hinge being here. And when it lifts up, it is lifting up because the head part, the bulbous head, wants to bind to actin. So it's really lifting to meet up with actin, and when it meets up with actin, it will then pivot. And here it's pivoting. So it literally lifts up and cranks over. So I have up and pivot. You could think of up and crank. That just seemed to look funny on the word, so I didn't write that on there, but it literally lifts up and it will bind to, we'll pretend this is actin now, and then it will bind to it and crank over. So, so remember when I said there's like little arms going and grabbing the rope and pulling the rope. The pulling is this crank part. So it's got to lift up to meet the actin and then it's gonna pull in one on each side. They're doing it in different directions, okay? And that brings towards the midline, okay? So, and then it resets and then we set it back down and then we re-pop, uncrank the head. And there you go. So energy, ATP. This is why working out makes us so tired because we're using up energy. ATP is needed in this whole process. ATP helps us reset. So when our muscle is going to contract, we lift the myosin up, it binds to actin, and it cranks over. Okay. And then if you're dead, it stays like that, and that's called rigor mortis. And that's why people are like rigid, because they're connected. So we need energy, ATP, to go to the head and like set it back down and re unset it. So our energy is actually used to unhook and reset. I like to think of it like a mouse trap. You have like those old school mouse traps, you know, like you pull the thing around and like set it there so it's on a hair trigger, and then as soon as the mouse hits it, the energy, you put energy into setting it. The energy was just released when it like smacked the mouse. <laughs> Sorry, it makes people sad if they think about that for the poor mouse. So, um, but the point is, is the energy is in the setting of the trap, just like the setting down of the myosin. As soon as it gets its chance, it's gonna lift and bind to actin and crank over. And then we're like, okay, gotta do another round. Here's ATP, energy, bring it back down and reset. And it does that over and over as long as you're contracting the muscle. So we're still going to put it together. I'm still giving you like these individual pieces. It's coming together. ATP comes in. It binds to the head of myosin. And it's going to set it back down and reset it. And now we're done. And so it's just ready to roll again. It's like setting your mousetrap. It's set and it's ready to spring because we gave it the energy to do that. So here's actin, 
Let's look at one little arm of it, shall we say? We're going to bring this in and we'll expand it. Here comes Acton. Bigger, looks like kind of a twisted necklace here onto it. So it's kind of a couple of beads. It's a string of binding sites for myosin. because Myosin needs something to bind to. There are regulatory proteins. So the regulatory proteins do what they say. They regulate. Like, hey, do we want myosin doing the pulling? Do we want to be contracting all the time? Or do sometimes we need to, so sometimes we need to just block it and not let myosin bind. That's what the regulatory proteins do. So this is actin with them on. So this is really what it looks like. So you have really the actin, which is the orange and the yellow. But we have these green stripes, these ropes, that are covering up the binding site. So if you think of, in this diagram, the yellow area is like a magnet for the head of myosin. That little head wants to bind to the yellow part. That's the binding site. But if you cover it up with the green thing, tropomyosin, then the actin or the myosin just sitting down here going, I'm waiting. And as soon as that yellow site is exposed, then it's like pops up. The regulatory proteins cover it up. Tropomyosin is the rope that's covering up all the active sites. Troponin is this weird little control. So calcium, we know from the sarcoplasmic reticulum is going to get released at some point. Like when we stimulate the muscle, say it's time to contract, let the calcium go. Calcium is going to find troponin. It's out there. It's on the troponin. And now what happens is troponin acts like a crowbar and then moves it over. And now what do we see? The active sites, the yellow parts are open. And then what's going to happen? Myosin is going to go, oh, there's the place I want to go to, and it, the little heads hook up, and then they do their crank. Troponin with calcium is a signal. Calcium binds to troponin and says, hey, tropomyosin, we're going to heave you over, move you over. The active sites are now available, so myosin has something to bind to. And as long as this is open, calcium's there, tropomyosin shifted over, little heads, little myosin's cranking, ATP resets it, it cranks, but they're just continuing this cycle. Calcium is keeping troponin, which is keeping tropomyosin open, so the muscles can just do its contracting for as long as you're able to handle that. So when calcium's available out, out in the muscle cell, it's like a heat-seeking missile straight to troponin. When it goes to troponin, active sites, meaning the binding sites for myosin are available and open. Cal troponin alone, I mean the calcium is put back away, then the active sites are covered up. So this is relaxed. Contracted state, because the active sites are available. Contracted state, active sites are available. And then relaxed state, active sites are covered up. Trigger for that is whether calcium's there or calcium's not. So the yellow part is the active site that myosin wants to bind to. So tropomyosin is the green here that's just blocking it in the relaxed state. Tropomyosin is the blocker. So when tropomyosin is in place, covering the active sites, the muscles relax. Troponin is really the boss of tropomyosin. When calcium is here, it moves it over. And when calcium's not, like in this case, it's covered and it's relaxed. Okay, so we have now the regulatory protein. So here's calcium shooting in. Here you go. Boop, calcium. And what does calcium bind to? Troponin. Troponin. Perfect. Okay, and that's 100% a test question. What does calcium bind to? Troponin. troponin. What does troponin do? It's tropomyosin. Tro yeah, shifts over tropomyosin. When tropomyosin moves over, what happens? The myosin binds with the actin. Because the active site on actin is exposed, and now myosin cannot resist, and those little heads pop up and bind. And as soon as they bind, they immediately crank over. How do we get the myosin to reset so we can do it again? ATP. And what's rigor mortis? We don't have any P, so the myosin heads are just stuck to it. There you go. You're dead, and you're up rigid. And then when you finally move, that means you're rotting, and then it's just breaking.
<laughs> so there you go. <laughs> there's, a, there's a thought. Name the three connective tissue layers surrounding muscle. Endomysium surrounds what? One. No, endo is one. Endo is one cell. Yes. Endo. Then perimysium is. Yes, it's a fascicle or a group of cells. Exactly. And then what's epimysium? The whole entire muscle. Exactly. Yep. Okay. So see how easy that is now. That's just like a. Yeah. And how do they form tendons? It's the Tootsie Roll wrapper because you have these ends of all these mysiums and they just continue where the muscle is no longer there. It's these ends, like the saran wrap hanging out the ends, and that's what's going to bind. And so a muscle really is, if you think about it, is really connective tissue from bone attachment, origin to bone attachment, with just muscle cells in between that's going to do the contracting and it's pulling on them as one continuous thing. So it's really quite a beautiful um, design. What are the parts of a muscle cell fiber? What's a cell membrane called? Sarcolemma. What's the cytosol called? Sarcoplasm. Okay, what is the stuff that's gonna conduct electricity down inside the cell? T-tubules. What are the pouches of calcium that we store calcium when we wanna be relaxed? Sarco yeah, sarcoplasmic reticulum. And so really when we want to contract, we just let the calcium out and it does all this other business that we are going to learn about. And then when we want to relax, we just suck it back in, right? So really the trigger is going to be calcium. We just have to learn the parts that's doing it through. So that's not that bad. What about myofibrils? That's the action. That's sort of contracting. If you want to think of it as the long train, and it's broken up into sections, sarcomere sections. Yeah. And so the little pieces within the sarcomeres that act in the myosin, they're called myofilaments, like the filaments are smaller. And then actin and myosin are gonna contract against each other. So then even tinier, what are and where are the regulatory proteins? Troponin and tropomyosin are the regulatory protein, and they are on, Ryan said it, on the actin. Yes, perfect. Okay, we got all the players on the board. Now let's make some action.